This diagram shows the setup for the front suspension, torsion bar and pull rod to lower the nose and best use parts I already have on hand. Okay, here's the torsion bar bell crank setup. I like to mock it up so that I can get an idea of what I have to fabricate in practice. The beam is half of an upper Volkswagen uh, beam torsion bar front suspension. Uh, those of you who know these units will know that there's a needle bearing in there and a further bearing back there and that the Volkswagen arm then slots in and is carried strongly within the tube. There are leaf springs, torsion leaf springs that run on the inside. Effectively I'm only using half of a leaf pack that then fits in the length of the tube and is held at one end by the standard Volkswagen block. Now what I intend to do is to use all of that unit but effectively chop the arm off. So I'm only using the part of the arm that serves to locate in the bearings. That then will have an additional eye on it, which is actually a Volkswagen height adjuster. That feeds into the bell crank through that tube, and it can be ratcheted round to various preload angles because the height adjuster is welded into the locating tube. The bell crank itself is pretty obvious. Uh, the top end here carries the damper, the shock absorber, and the front end, which is about 80 to 100 mils, carries the pull rod up to the upper wishbone, the upper A arm. This is all held very securely because Unlike in the Volkswagen, this is not carrying any sideways suspension loads. It's only carrying torsion loads through this eye fixed into here. So the divot in here and the divot in here will bind the bell crank to the torsion bar and eventually the chassis assembly. This bar, of course, is this tube is part of the chassis. So there's some fabrication to do, but it's not particularly onerous. I think the onerous issue will be more in the setup of the preload and where the holes are drilled to mount this at the correct angle to clock it correctly relative to the bell crank. Let's get into it. Right, that's two blanks. And what I hope is a price for recycling, the bell crank sides will be cut from this very dodgy and well used piece of three mil plate, eighth inch plate. Rightio, the blanks are made. It now just comes down to neatening things up assembling and tech welding them together. You can see how it's coming together. It's just lightly tacked at this stage to gusset and box the bell crank using these parts cut from the old blanks. Don't worry about the knobs, they're just part of a jig holding it all together. 
Okay, there's the bow crank welded together. The welds are a bit wobbly. I lost my way a couple of times. The torsion leaves hook onto that, which goes on the inside of the sleeve. This goes on the outside so that I can rotate and adjust the preload and whereabouts the bow crank sits. I'm not completely welding that together at the moment because when it's installed and when I start putting preload on I'm not entirely sure where the angles are going to end up and I may need to clock the sleeve or clock other parts of it to get the bell crank aligned correctly. Here it is more or less sitting in place. If you forgive the plastic tube, the blue painter's tape, the cable ties and other things, but it'll give you an idea of how things are set up. The bell crank is sitting in there as you can see. The torsion tube comes back and is connected to the frame. The dampers are almost horizontal so everything is fitted quite low in the car. I can adjust the spring rate by moving the torsion leaf pack in and out. Uh, it will protrude through the bottom of the bell crank there. The pull rod works through the open area in the middle of the lower A-arm. Overall, I've probably got about a four kilogram penalty per side compared to just a simple arrangement of coil springs or coilovers, albeit that I would have struggled to fit coilovers into the limited amount of space. I hope I can compensate for the penalty of extra weight because A, the weight is positioned very low in the car and B, I've now got a tremendous adjustability in the suspension including a rising rate on the, on the springs. A rising rate on the springs occurs because as the AR moves up, it pulls the bell crank up and changes the angle between the bell crank and the pull rod, making it harder for the pull rod. In fact, if the bell crank was vertical, the spring rate would go to infinite. There's a lot going on in this area so it's very dense with mechanical components. There's a lot of competition for space between the mechanical components at the front of the vehicle. Here the steering rack is roughly positioned where it needs to go. You can see I'll have to lift the uh, front of the frame up slightly in order to give the steering rack room to breathe. The steering rack will also need a significant extension on it in order to reach the steering arms from the Metro hubs. This car is a little bit wider than a standard Mini. However, stepping back and despite the binding on the wooden frame here and there, there's actually plenty of clearance around the mechanical components. And all of the triangulation at the front means that I haven't compromised the integrity of the space frame. So and now it's time to commit to steel. There are so many weird angles involved in this space frame. I'm sure it's going to drive me nuts cutting and shaping and fitting all the parts together. For example, here there's a six-way junction with a lot of complicated multi-dimensional cuts and angles, which even with square tube, is going to be a nightmare to fit and fashion. However, that's the joy of retirement. No money, but plenty of time.